69, get it? No, no, <laughs> no. no, no, no. Before what? we, no. What? Before we go any further, mm. I don't think, I don't think we can do this. Wow. It's a big number, isn't it? I don't think we can ever do it justice. All we do is episode 69 with like, it, it's the best episode we've ever done. Everything that happens is really funny and yeah. sexual and hilarious. Or oh, sorry, weed related. Weed related. Yeah. Yeah. Thank weed you. Number, yeah. um, and it'll be, it's, it'll be great. I, I think you should have more faith. But that sounds like a real gamble. What if we don't live up to the expectations of episode 69? You're right. It sounds yeah. like effort, to be honest. This... And we, we don't do effort here at Podiots. Yeah. <laughs> it's the kind of thing we couldn't recover refro- recover from as a, a bad 69er. Mm. I will never financially recover from this. So <laughs> what I'm proposing is that maybe we just skip it and come back to it in the future when we're ready. I mean, there well, is there is the risk that if we don't 69 our listeners properly, that they'll tell all of the listeners in the, you know, in in our social circle that we don't know how to 69 properly, and then we'll be oh, the laughing that, stock. Oh, that would be really embarrassing, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's what everyone says at school. It's like, oh, you can't 69. No, 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 no. Like, oh, yeah. Stop it. They'd be talking about us in the listeners' toilets, where all <sighs> the listeners gossip to each other. All oh, the that. cool kids smoke their cigarettes, mm. laughing at us while 69ing. Yeah. yeah. Smoke their weed cigarettes. So what do we do then? Do we just go to episode 70? Uh, I think it's yeah. best, isn't it? I and mean, we've already got one in the later base, haven't we? Episode 50. Yeah, episode 50 is also on the back burner for another time. So not long before <laughs> episode 100 doesn't happen. That one will also definitely just Episode be 100 is, will also be delayed. <laughs> but to be fair, episode 50 has only been delayed because we want to do it in person. And probably the same for episode 100 if we're allowed at that time. Yeah. But episode 69, I feel like that needs to be on more of a more of a permanent hiatus until we're really, really sure we can do it right. Until we've got, like, Dave Benson to come in from Cameo <sighs> or something like that. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes. I wonder how much it would cost, actually. I'm thinking about that now. Could we, ca- cam- could we like, charge him through Cameo just, like, Charge a cameo per question. Yeah, mm. one by and one. Then we could splice just get it into in the questions. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. Oh, How God. much was it f- to get him to do that video again? Was it 50 quid or was it 30 I think, quid? I, I think 50. Remember. Yeah, that was two minutes, but that was with video. Oh, that's and true. And excellent pantomime acting as well. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so maybe if it was just audio, he'd be... Ch- Either way, this is, a, this is a bridge we can cross another time, but that's for episode 69. And we're all agreed this is episode six, 70. Oh, no. 70, <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's a tangled mess. We're going to do it French ways. Mm. I did it once, French wise. It was a hoot. <laughs> it was a hoot. 60, yes. 11. Episode 60, 11. Yeah. No, 60, 10. 60, 10. 60, yeah. 10. But we can't, how do we write that? It can't be episode 610 <laughs> or 60 10. We uh, just write it out in letters, don't we? Yeah, 60, 10. 60, 10. <laughs> Okay. Good. All right. Well, it's agreed then. That's what it is. Episode sixty ten. Yeah. This is welcome to episode sixty ten, and then the next one will be sixty eleven, and it'll just oh, we'll be forever. in the sixties forever. Yeah. Fuck it. We can do whatever we want. We're in charge. We are. Numbers are just a made up concept. Let's rock this num- numerical system. We should run the uh, the episode sixty ten theme tune right now. I can't wait to hear how different it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Podiots, the official Boom. Vidiots Bam. podcast. Oh. Uh, it's a conversational podcast where we take some questions from you at home and obey the law of the three R's, where everybody brings a, a thing along to, to talk, talk about. about. I'm Ben. I'm Peter. And I'm Michael. Good evening, gentlemen. Hello. Oh. Welcome, welcome, one and all. I've uh, I've just realised that um, there will eventually be a year. Not that's not just six thousand and ten, so it looks like sixty ten. But that's how people will actually say it out loud, like like twenty twenty. They'll say oh, sixty yeah. ten, won't they? God, weren't the sixty tens shit? Yeah. <laughs> God, they'll all be able to listen to this episode. Wait, what were the sixty hundreds? I guess. 60, yeah, the 60, what century would 6, that 000. be? Oh, God. I can't even do the math. Oh, no, I don't the know. The 61st century? 
Yeah, I suppose it, it was would, pretty yeah. simple actually. Yeah. <laughs> you add one, <laughs> just go forward six thousand years or mm. for, for that help. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's bold of you to assume humankind is going to exist. I know it is really bold, isn't it? I think possibly there will be some sort of lizard people listening to this by then. Yeah, we've had a good run of two thousand years so far, so mm. I'd like to think we're at least double that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really glad we got to have our turn when it all went to shit. Yeah, yeah it's really right. fair, isn't it? Also, I've got a big news flash for you, Mikey, that the human race isn't 2,000 years old. It's a damn sight older than that. That was when what? Jesus was born. But that's when it's... Why, why, doesn't, why doesn't it start... At, I'm very confused, Peter. Why would why did we in the year 2000 if it wasn't the actual year 2000? No, sorry, you're right. It's, sorry. Skip it's amazing years. to think the world is 2,000 years I old. I forgot my it? Bible studies. You, you, I don't know where I was going with that. You're absolutely correct, Michael. Um, yeah. God Thank made you, the Peter. world. That's, He's a sinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, if you want to support these sinners, quick side note here, mm. you can. You, did you know you can do that? You actually can. If you go to streamlabs.com forward slash podiots donations, donate three pounds or more, you get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show and join the prestigious pod squad. We split them three ways. I did it once, three ways. And, <laughs> and we all read some names out. We're going to do that right now. Here's your pod squad. Easy mm. pod squad. It, we start with the majestic chonky boy, demo dicks twitching asshole, K Dewey, and the very just stupendously generous Whoa. Samuel de Barber with um, sixty ten sixty ten a sixty ten sixty ten donation. <laughs> <laughs> almost seventy episodes in. Well, almost sixty ten episodes in, and you lot have lost none of your freaky freshness. Mm. Keep it up, and thank you for populating the walk to the shops or the bus into the city with tales of meat face. Parrots, microwave drug evasion, and the rest. Hashtag, please, no more fanfic. What the hell is microwave drug evasion? I don't even understand yeah, our which own one universe is that one? anymore. Honestly, I've got no idea. No, which I one don't. is that? Hey, Samuel de Barber, donate 6010610 again and let us know <laughs> yeah. which one it was. <laughs> Thank you very much, Samuel. Thank you. And we continue. Gooey bug spittoon. Lockdown three stupid Nazis. <laughs> Who was very generous and says, oh, oh, for God's oh, sake, you guys got have got me to there. stop with these. That's right. Re- nah, that's refunding that three quid. Take that back. <laughs> you don't want your money. B- Barry Scott violates pennies. Dabba the Christie. Dabba the Christie. Dabba the Christie. Trickly sister. Dabba. <laughs> Dab- Dabba the Christie. I just like Dabba. Mm. Like dabba dee dabba die. Anyway, yep. Emily Lemons, big titty Justin 69. Oh, 60 10. 60 10. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Numbers. New Year, new Chegwin rip. <laughs> oh, yeah. We Jer- asked for the Chegwin names now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Le- le- bring out the Chegwins, those funny, funny Chegwins. Jericho's mud baby, who was very generous and says, Hey guys, thanks for all the great content you produce. Can you please say happy birthday to my husband Rick at. Mm, that's a Twitter name, isn't it? L- L- <laughs> LSNSI2293 on Twitter, as we're both massive fans and it would make his birthday a bit brighter during lockdown. Much love and keep safe. Well, Rick. Happy, happy, happy birthday, birthday. Happy birthday. Happy Have birthday, a wonderful Rick. day. One of it. us. Lockdown birthday. One mm-hmm. of us. Oh, God, we're approaching the time where everyone's going to have going to have had a lockdown birthday. That's I know. Fun. Those January babies thought they were safe, but nope. <laughs> nobody, nope. nobody can behave. And here we are. Oh. Hope you enjoy your Zoom quiz. <laughs> oh, I don't want Zoom quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> Spread cheeks, slap balls. That's that's another donator name. That's not just a, a, a me saying that. <laughs> it's an sorry. Instruction. <laughs> <laughs> happy, happy Zoom quiz. Spread cheeks, slap balls. <laughs> <laughs> I want that to be your new catchphrase or sign off. <laughs> okay. At the end of the episode, you'll get a lovely big old. Well, I'm not going to say it now. You have to wait till the end for it. Mm. Yeah. Chav Chav Ramirez, cares of Gallifrey, and the uncancellable Tom Hanks. Oh, Tom, thank you. Um, the the list continues with artist formerly known as Chegg. Nice. Uh, Lou Lou Mum said dinner is ready. Lou <laughs> Mum said dinner is ready. There nice. we go. Carry the worst. Freddie Weber buys used pants. Oh no. Sad Keith Chedwank. <laughs> uh, cold as a witch's tit. Lord Brotovich, Mr. Black. 
Make TP say cunting daughter. Stephen Scodes. Donna C07. Base Windu. I come in the land down under. <laughs> Can't shack it. Okay. Uh, bean with two E's. Bean, as in went. Uh, 4PGBP Mike E. And 4TP Wedding. Oh, there you go. That you have to split that off into your wedding. The wedding yeah. podiat's account. This is like a numbers radio station. It is, <laughs> and uh, also make America Jugson again. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking did. Yeah. We yeah. also have ha ha me at tube ha 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 who was very generous and said meat face pork cylinder ah watch out and they've included a link which I have opened <laughs> and it's to the company that manufactures Billy Bear ham. Oh wow. And did you know that oh, I've closed it? <laughs> it's gone now. Did you know that there's also lots of different varieties of that? Oh, I think I've seen you... one other kind, yeah, but I didn't know there were many varieties. I'm familiar with the football variety. Mm. I'll open it now. It's like there's you can get like a um you can get a love heart. It's all just massively it just doesn't look right. Uh, there's <laughs> Billy Bear ham. I hate there's... Billy Bear ham. I never ate it cuz I did oh. not trust it at all. Oh, I loved it as a kid. Yeah, I think I had it a couple of times as a quote-unquote treat, but I remember it being um, crunchy, and I think that oh. put me off in the end. There you go, there's a link. So there's there's all their varieties. There's Billy, which is like a horrible clown boy, Billy Bear Ham, Happy Bear Ham, Happy Lion Ham, Happy Clown, oh, Happy Monkey, no. Happy Fox, Happy Tractor, and Heart in Heart, which you all need to stock up on for Valentine's Day. Happy Tractor Ham. What on earth? Hack wow. off a big slice of that delicious looking artificial heart ham. <laughs> Great. Also, um, I like that you you said the name as um, haha me at tube, but I think it's meant to be meat tube. Oh, tube. yeah, no, you're right. Oh, we all just gl- glid right past that, didn't we? <laughs> That's the problem with no camel case. Yeah, use that camel case. Difficult to find out. It does say the product advantages it lists on, or, or lists on this website is impressive design definition. <laughs> it, and, is, uh, it is. Seasoned to suit children's taste without artificial flavour enhancers. So. With a shelf life of up to seven months fresh, it should oh, not last that that's long. That's not real meat, that's is it? That's not right. No. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Diffuse Trap McFacey Boy, Jinky Fizz Gog. God, Bobby Stream Fund, the Diller in Man- Manila. God, this is getting harder to say. I'm nearly falling over all of them. Hello, this is Rules Boys. Fuck. Potato Shack for Dronald Tump. Dronald Tump 2024. Fuck Mini Cheddars. Trade oh. Union Congress Bickies. <laughs> Jones Skeed Independent Vag. A very generous Reggie Bronx, who donated 6010. Nice. And said, have been an avid fan since day one. A donation has been long overdue. After all, you've created an intricate universe of unrivaled wonder and silliness that easily outshines any Hollywood guff. <laughs> Here's to 2021, which is already going great for humanity. Hmm. Thank you, Reggie. Thank you, Reggie. Prince Beefcakes. Cheggers Naked Jinkle. Mr. <laughs> Macker. And Followed By. Who didn't get <laughs> me because they were last the this end. week. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. That's your. That's a horrible photo, Michael. Yeah, what on earth? They let you that. investigate in the website. They let you print whatever design you want on the meat. I mean, oh, I'm sure it's not can printed. We, no. Can, can we? we get some some body <laughs> to meat, mate? Please. <laughs> can we get <laughs> some <laughs> Billy Ray ham, please? Oh. <laughs> We could get oh. the exact if we turned Meat Face into a black and white like binary image. We could get Meat Face made into mass produced happy ham. <laughs> the thing is, though, I think we'd have to order like thousands of kilograms of it. <laughs> but it lasts for seven months, Ben. We'd yeah. be sorted. If we refrigerate it, we could sell it to the audience. I can just picture the factory kicking into gear. Like, we've got an order through. It's the first 20,000 cases years. of meat face ham. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Don't want no. it. Nobody wants it. However, if you would like to support us, Podiots Donations, that's streamlabs.com forward slash Podiots Donations, three pounds or more. Thank you so much to all of you generous folk this week. And we'll give you a shout out at the end of the show as well. Right. Are you boys ready for your first question? Yes. yes. This is from Paul, 
at Paul Zaremba16 on Twitter. It finally happened. You boys have created a pill that gives you incredible bravery. The bravery lasts for 24 hours, or for us Americorns, one day. What would you use your pill for? Okay, love you, bye. P.S. You only get one pill. Only one. Oh, uh, so we've got to use our bravery, bravery wisely. Yeah, if you were immensely brave, what would you do? 24 hours. See, something that I wish I was a bit braver or more confident to do would be to like do tra- do a lot more traveling and go mm. to places out of my comfort zone and you know um places where you know there's there's not the kind of um lavish lifestyle that the three of us are used to as white cis male cracker boys mm-hmm. um but i kind of feel like if the pill only worked for 24 hours i would find myself in you know um Perhaps the Gobi Desert or, you know, um, I, I don't know where I would go necessarily, but, you know, the Australian outback and then suddenly the pill would wear off after a day and I'd then be stuck there in the mindset that I've got now, which is I don't want to go out into the wilderness somewhere. I'd be terrified. Like my grandparents, when they were, I think, well into their 60s, if not early 70s, when uh, walking, hiking in Morocco just through a desert with like one guide and for some of it they were like riding camels and they had to put tents up in the desert overnight and sleep in the desert and I'm like wow. Jesus I wish I was like you know I wish I was of the mindset where I would you know feel confident enough to go out and do that but I just don't I want to stay at home in Britain uh, and sometimes go to Europe and America maybe if I can afford to um <laughs> right. so but this is all pointless because the reason I brought this up is that that's what I would do if I had like a bottle of these pills, but I don't. So I don't know. I'm I'm thinking now. What would I do? Okay. Uh, you guys have had some thinking time now from that that brain diarrhea that I just did. You could you could, is it like something you could do where like you you go on the border of several countries and like the second you touch down that plane you just slam a pill and just speedboat your way around. I mean that wouldn't work bordering between countries. <laughs> Into a couple of uh, countries, <laughs> yeah. You try as and many as I down. can. <laughs> and then the second it wears off, right back on that plane and home, and you, you've had the best holiday of your life. Yeah. I also don't really like traveling very much, as in, like, I don't like the process of flying somewhere and faffing around, like, with with um, logistics, I guess is the word. So, <laughs> you know, I would also feel like I probably would want a tablet for the for the however long flight as well. So... <laughs> God, you're going to be on a, on a cocktail of drugs for this holiday. I am, yeah. <laughs> it's an awful lot of effort to go to just to see the world, Peter. Well, th- this is the thing, though. So when I see, like, travel documentaries and stuff, and people are out there, like, seeing these amazing places and, like, other cultures and meeting people who they would never normally meet and doing things, like, incredible things, I look at it and I'm like, wow, that's great. I'd love to do that. And then I think about, like, you know, even, even just planning an idea for a trip like that and then i go oh no i can't do that i'm not doing that that's horrible i don't want to i don't want to worry about where i'm going and whether i can speak the language and whether i might not have the chase on the telly and i can't be yeah. without my chase <laughs> whether i'm gonna get sick you know I don't, it's not it's certainly not coming from a from an ignorant xenophobic standpoint it's it's like what i want i want to enjoy that like that cultural aspect of it it's just everything else that comes with that like worrying about how i'm going to get to places or what if i get ill out there or you know it's all that aspect to it so um but i don't know what would i use a 24-hour pill for hmm uh i think i know what i'd do with it and i'm I'm going big with this one so stand back boys buckle up okay i'm ready because i've got two contracts that are coming to an end this month my phone bill and my adobe bill and they're both going to go up well the adobe's definitely going to go up and i want to i want to be able to negotiate a better price without being too scared of upsetting the person on the other, <laughs> other end of the phone i want to go into that call with bravery and go in there with a price and i will not settle for any less no you won't no i i want i want my phone for no no more than 30 pound a month no you more. listen to me all right i've been a pain i want to go full karen i just want to go hammer them adobe i pirated your software for years and several years ago i made the jump i'm now a legal customer do you want to lose me do you want to lose me michael johnson no they don't they're not <gasps> exactly. going to want to they're going to be so impressed by your bravery yeah they're going to think shit we, we need this guy around he's, he's propping up the rest of the product yeah <laughs> and i 
I just, I think, or phone calls in general, I'd, I'd probably set aside a day just to do all the phone calls I'd, I've been putting off for years. Because <laughs> I just hate phones. I hate talking on the phone. Yeah. Like, if the phone rings, I never answer it. I just goes to voicemail. Well, if it was important, they'd ring me back. Can I give, <laughs> you, this. give you some advice before you call them on your bravery pill? Oh, yes, please. Shop around and see what the other deals are available online because there's a good chance oh. they offer a cheaper deal than the one you're on and you can just say, I oh. want that, and they'll do it because they're yeah. a coward. Karen who's backed by numbers. Yeah, you can't do fight it. this. Carphone Warehouse does it for this much. How are you? Match it, my friend. You're going to lose me. <laughs> yeah. You can do it. Yeah, I wonder if maybe I would use my 24 hours of bravery for sort of social reasons, <laughs> you know, sort of telling telling people things that I've needed to tell them for a long time or you're a fucking um, cunt yeah I've always wanted to say that to you I've always wanted to say it but I've been too scared to but now now I'm not and when I wake up tomorrow and the pill's worn off I'll feel terrible about it (laughs) um and you know stuff like I mean not this not this but like this things like (laughs) asking for a pay rise but I don't need a pay rise because we we do we do all right at triple jump I would say but yeah that's a good shout I yeah. don't want to be on public record saying hey I don't get paid enough by Adam Pacitti because we do but you know that sort of thing that on that level yeah yeah that's the that's the thing actually I just sorry it's just yeah pay rise is one of those scary things where it's scary to yeah. ask for them because it, if you if you if you just detach yourself from the situation they're not going to fire you for asking no, for a pay not. rise yeah <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it might be you might get a pitiful pay rise, which might make you feel worse. But you know, it could work out. Yeah. Just do it, and everyone out there, you don't don't be like us. Go out there, message your boss. Say, hey, fucker, give give us give. I need I need to buy some some meat face tubes. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I've got the contact us form page open, and once we've finished, I am going to reach out and see what the minimum order is, or if right. we can get like a sample. Mm-hmm. Um, I will explain that we are a comedy podcast and this would be great promotion for your international ham website. <laughs> Failed Hoyers Group, where tradition meets innovation. Yes. Is there anything more innovative than than podcasts? Question mark. Allow me to introduce to you Meat Face Ham. It's a face I know you already do it, but it's like it's kind of it's an upsetting face, and we think the novelty alone will be well worth investing in. Can we have one? please so i've had an idea as well looking at this contact page on the contact page there is mm. a photograph of mr bernard uh fern uh, yeah. yeah. who is the founder or he's the owner and managing director of the feld hoyers group how unnerved would they be if we sent the picture of mr <laughs> bernard feld hughes feld yes Hewes? We would like asked, one of these, please. We would like this on ham, please. <laughs> would they do it? Would they maybe just like message him first and be like, we've had this really weird order. They mm. want you on the ham. Um, how, he would probably say, how many are they going to buy? Yeah. yeah. And we'd say one, and then he'd say no. Mm. Yeah. And that would probably be it. Mm. But you never the know. spokesperson for this company, are they called the Meat Face? Surely, right? They have a yes. phone number. I mean, if it wasn't so late, I would use my bravery pill to call them live now <laughs> and see if I could talk to someone. Oh, gonna... the possibility is this pill. Go on, send some to my way. It sounds like you've got a supply, whoever sent this question. Yeah. Do it. You could make magic happen live on air. 100%. Mm. It could happen. It could I've happen. added the, the managing director to the thread on Twitter. Okay. Good. He might be on Twitter, you know. He might be. Can we oh. at him? What, what's, he, what's he called again? Did we just at him in the picture of himself? <laughs> Bernhard with an H. Bernhard, B E R N Hard. Bernhard, yeah. And then his middle initial is A, and yeah. then he's Feld who is Feld Hoyers. I don't know if it's Dutch or something or German. F E L D H U E S. I've I've found I've Googled his name correctly. Um I don't know that he's on Twitter, you know. Oh, oh that's a shame. I don't know that he's yeah, it it just oh, you want to know what the A stands for in his name? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's Adolf. No, it is. <laughs> it is. Oh, no, no, that's it why is. it's A. There's I only guess. there's only one tweet that one Twitter response, and it's someone. It's Paul Rose tweeting in 2020 saying it would seem that the character Billy, the smiling sausage, was created in the 1960s by Feld Feld. What was it? Feld House Feld Hoys Feld. Feld Hoyers, who is? Feld, Feld Who's CEO, Mr. Bernard Adolf Feld Who's. Wow. So there you go. 
Oh, in the 1960s. Maybe that's a previous managing director. Maybe they've, I think that might be an ancestor. Right, but he's also got the A middle name. Yeah, well, he has. That's true. Oh what does it? God. What does this mean? Does this mean anything? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this means. There's no way to. I mean, know. we're definitely not getting any meat from this company now, are we? Well, I'm still <laughs> going to try, and I'll report back next time. I don't know if I will get a reply, but we will. We will see, and we'll see what we get. I'm very <laughs> just a interested. big fan of the usual vidyot's menagerie of images and then just german businessman there he is oh here he is oh no someone's already done it already done what this is in the google image results <laughs> oh <God. laughs> who is is that is i don't that know Billy if that's Ray? him but that's just that's a man's face in a slice of ham and i don't know if it's his <laughs> or someone else <laughs> But it shows up in his Google image results, so... What on earth is this? This is really interesting. And it's the same tweet from Paul Rose as well. <laughs> I have no idea what any of this means. No. I'm beyond lost right now. This I'm is currently, real. Just, <laughs> gone down currently a real... just looking at a wall of meat. A real <laughs> rabbit <laughs> hole here, haven't we? I, re- I reversed image searched it, so now I've just got the same picture of <laughs> beef just tiled all across Google. <laughs> just a wall of beef. <laughs> the, the beef wall. The Feldhoyers <laughs> Group beef wall, now available with your logo. For fuck's sake, <laughs> what? Oh, man. I'm, I, need to, I, I need to email them. Sorry, the one in the top right is called Moist Meat Dump. Oh, no. Moist Meat Dump album on Ninja. See, I don't want to see the Moist Meat Dump. <laughs> Nobody wants to see the Moist Meat Dump. Hang on, I'm no, just adding... No one needs that. I'm just adding the meat wall to the Twitter thread. Bear with me. And then... Anyway, uh, what I'd use um, the pill for is probably, uh, like, just just some ambitious career decisions you know is in like reaching out to people i would never th- bother reaching out to because i would think oh they don't, they don't have they don't have fucking time for us you know mm. they're not interested in working with us and just and just actually fucking contacting them finding a way and just being insistent and, um, and persevering and saying hey come make a video with us we're great so bravely that they have to accept that's the tricky thing. It's not the first message isn't necessarily the hardest. It's the nudges after that, yeah. where like, well, I didn't see the first one. Should I try again? Am I just annoying them now? Is this a yeah. bridge I'm going to burn? No, forever? I get that yeah. all the time with PR, where you reach out and and it takes the mages to respond, and you're like, oh, great, so glad to hear from you. So can we? We're working together, yes. And then you don't hear anything, and it's like, at what point is it <laughs> unprofessional for me to keep <laughs> emailing them, even though we're a business and we need to be contacting them anyway? And are they being rude? I don't understand. I've just realised how much there is to unpack in that tiled beef image. Oh my the, god! The last, the last three beefs have been photoshopped to look neater and tidier. <gasps> they've had a flake what? removed, and they've had the rind from the right hand side horizontally flipped and added yeah, to the left hand side. That is a sweet beef, there. Also, the middle, the middle row, the far left one. The caption is "Fillet me down on a bed of roses," oh, which is sake. very good. Fillet. Absolutely. God bless this this fillet. This is <laughs> been a source of much inspiration. Is he much to think about? Much to think very, about. very much. Wow. For fuck's sake! I'm now looking at another Bernhard Feldhoy's uh, LinkedIn page. It's not him. It's a different guy. Yeah. Oh. I think we should move on. Bernhard Hitler <laughs> Feldhoys is his name. Yes, 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 it is. I'm sure a lot of people probably have the middle name Adolf, or or maybe are called Adolf, right? Oh yeah, I think certainly the people in the 60s who were born and named pre World War II, mm-hmm. definitely. But I think Adolf is quite famously now, certainly in Europe, not not a, a good name. name, not a good name to have. Mm. Yeah. Or is it more? I think it, certainly Hitler doesn't exist anymore as a surname. But maybe mm-hmm. Adolf still does, actually. Maybe that's... Yeah, maybe there are still a few Adolfs around. Hey, if you're an sure. Adolf, get in touch. We're sorry for insinuating stuff about yeah. you. There's a lot of Adolfos, obviously, but that's different. Yeah. And you get it in like other countries. Like in South America, you get certain names that you wouldn't have over here. But um, let us know. Adolf, if you're out there, get in touch. Searched on Facebook for Adolf, not seen a lot. So... <laughs> I'm sure the accounts that you do find as well, you probably don't want to be friends probably with. Probably not real. Yeah, maybe yeah, not. 
They might have chosen that name and changed it via deed poll. Yeah, there's one. That is, this isn't going to go on the link dump, but I just wanted to send you this. Uh, this Adolf, <laughs> who's popped up. Uh, here, you boys go. Uh, who's got a thing that they would like to do? <laughs> oh, God, no. Oh, the worst man. Um, he lives in... Well, no, I won't even identify him, but... Uh, that's, that's just for good. us. That's just for us. That's for us. You imagine at home what that looks like. Hmm. It's a real Facebook page, though, because that's allowed on Facebook because Facebook is a good website. I just like where it says he lives, and I'm not talking about the nation of origin, just those first three words. <laughs> that's where he lives. I think he's done that intentionally. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh, Jesus. Okay, okay, it's thing. Come on. Who's got a thing? Let's do right. it. I've got a, an anecdotal thing. Not done one of those Ooh. in a little while. We're half yeah. an hour into the podcast. And we're never talking about a thing. <laughs> Ten minutes looking at a stick. Oh, it's not Jesus. Even, not even cooked properly, no. No. Well, I mean, that's it's all pink in the middle. That's raw. Terrible. Uh. <laughs> um, so instead of bringing along our internet thing this week, I thought it's been a while since we've done anecdotal stuff on this podcast, or certainly since I have. Um, so here's a thing that happened to me in my actual life. Um, this week, I think, start of this week. So Amy and I were sitting down on uh, on Monday night. Uh, we'd had our din-dins and we were watching, I think we were watching Only Connect, the the game show. Um, what is that? It's, um, uh, it's the one where, oh, it's like self-aware in how nerdy it is, but it doesn't stop being as nerdy and embarrassing as it is. And yet oh, we can't beautiful. stop watching it. It's, um, you have to work out what the the connection is between like four clues so it's not just between four things so it's not just like oh what connects tinky winky milo bob the builder and what you know it's like oh cbc yeah. characters it's like you know what connects purple triangle head purple skin mm. boy yellow hat man and you know like that so yeah. there's kind of two layers to it. Anyway, so that's the show. It's completely irrelevant to the story, but that's what we were watching. Um, oh, nice. And as we're concentrating on the final round, which is very intense and high speed, um, I hear like a, a phone going off near me, just sort of like just gets a notification, a little a little hum from a phone. And I was like, uh, I, I didn't even really think about it at all. Um and then I heard it again a couple of seconds later. And at, at that point, I started to think, well, I mean, that's not mine. Mine's in my pocket. And it was sort of to my right and behind me and coming from a sort of elevation that no phone should be there. It sounded like it was maybe on the back of the sofa or like someone was standing behind me, like holding a phone five feet in the air. You know, like it was coming from a certain altitude that it shouldn't have been. And I realized it was like not quite being consistent in the length. It was sort of like buzzing and then like not and then and then on and off. And then I was like, what is that noise? And it sounded just like a phone vibrating. And I just looked over my shoulder casually and fuck me. There was a huge wasp what? on the back of the sofa right by my head it had just landed there and i was i'd been hearing it buzz and i was like what the fuck is going on for context for anyone listening to this podcast you know like a year after it's come out it's january at the moment it's <laughs> really cold it keeps snowing in england at the moment um so i looked over my shoulder i actually had um i, I had a, a hot very, very um, almost brimming mug of tea in my hand, sort of on my lap. Oh, and no. as I tried to articulate, I think I also had a mouthful <laughs> of tea in my mouth. And as I tried to articulate to Amy, I, I sort of stood up, not wanting to spill my tea on a rug that we've just bought, which is sort of oh, quite no. pale coloured. And I'm sort of moving and sh sort of jostling her because I'm trying to swallow my tea <laughs> and move. And there's a G giant wasp over my shoulder and she looks at me and all she is aware of she doesn't know what is the cause of my behavior she just knows that something scary is happening so she is on her feet and out of the door before i've even stood up and put my tea down so she goes up there and then from outside of the lounge with the door shut she's going what what what's, what's <laughs> oh happening God. what's happening 
because uh, she's very arachnophobic and I think she thought that I'd seen a big spider and I normally don't react to spiders. I'm not too bad with them unless they are those absolute monster autumn spiders that sometimes oh, come in in like horrible little things. Yeah. Um, so I think she thought that I'd seen a spider that was big enough for me to be scared of it. Um, and I went, there's a fucking massive wasp in here. What is going on? And she was like, what? What? And she was like, oh, God, that's horrible. Can you get it? Can you get it? So I ran into the kitchen, which is adjoining to our living room. And she's still out in the hallway um, to grab a glass to put over the wasp. And when I came back into the living room, the wasp had vanished. Oh. Um, so we then spent a good five, ten minutes looking around the room. I think it had flown somewhere and and landed, but it was like underneath something. So we couldn't hear it buzzing. We couldn't see it anywhere. And I was like, I genuinely, at the towards the end, before we finally found it again, I was starting to think, did I just have some sort of episode there where I completely <laughs> imagined a really, really big wasp? Because we, we it was nowhere. We couldn't find it at all. Um, anyway, eventually uh, I saw it. Uh, sitting on a on a cushion on the floor. Oh, it's just sitting there having a good time. It was nice just relaxing. Load. It was trying to enjoy only connect, I think. Um, <laughs> so I I put the glass on it, uh, put a card underneath, and it was super huge. And at the time, I didn't really think to take a photo to then share with podcast listeners. And I really hate that I didn't. But I've done some googling since, and <laughs> apparently wasps don't survive in the winter. The only ones that do are queens that hibernate. Um, So I think it was a queen wasp. Uh, Anyway, I thought, well, it can't stay in here because it will sting someone. So I threw it outside. I don't like to squish bugs if I can help it, but I put it outside and I thought, I don't think it's going to do very well out here. Um, And then uh, normally if I'm putting a spider out that I've got in a glass, I'll happily just sort of fling, I mean, keep hold of the glass, but sort of do a flinging motion so the spider flies out of the glass. But I didn't really want to do that with a wasp because I thought, you know, I don't want to agitate this thing and make it come back and sting me. So I just left the glass on its side on the doorstep for a little while and thought, I'll just come back in 10 minutes when the wasp has hopefully left. Um, And when I came back out, I'm very sorry to report that the wasp had frozen to death and become a crispy wasp. Peter the wasp killer. Yeah, I'm a big old wasp killer. I mean, nature is the real wasp killer here. Um, So apparently this is something that can happen. Wasps hibernate in like lofts and wall cavities and stuff. Queen, Queen wasps do. And they can actually be confused by light levels. So if there's some light going into, say, your loft or into the wall or something, if you've got a little hole... And if it if the light just from a from your from your room light um, casts onto the wasp, they can think that it's waking up time, and they can wake up and emerge early. Wow. So it probably would have died anyway, if that's any consolation. It's but, uh, not. I'm furious. Yeah. So that's my giant wasp story. I can't really emphasize how big it was. It was not a normal wasp at all, and uh, <laughs> it was just so out of place and out of context and it's just not the right time of year and I'm just trying to watch a game show at like 8pm what are you doing in my house you know you should have tried to approach things more diplomatically you know get a little thimble fill it with very sugary tea put yeah. it in front of it mm-hmm. let it just enjoy the show and then politely you know open the letterbox and shove it out the way yeah <laughs> if you're cold she's cold let her <laughs> in that's right <laughs> Oh, rest in peace. Oh, did you name the wasp or do you not, not want to go through that heartbreak? Uh, no, I couldn't bear to do that. Um, yeah. I was then a bit paranoid for the rest of the day that there might be more wasps. But having, as I say, I've since done some interneting. And if it was a queen, which I think it must have been, then it's unlikely that there are any more. But uh... oh, Peter, the other wasps are going to come for their queen now. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> they they know what revenge. you've done. Regicide. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> If you do kill a wasp, though, it, rem- it doesn't it release some pheromones and attract more wasps? Yeah, I've, I've heard that. Yeah, I've always assumed that that's true, but I, but I don't I mean, think I guess citation needed. But... Dying from the cold will do that. I think it's more of a case of squishing. Well, and there's also no wasps around, I'm assuming. Hopefully. So, uh, hopefully. <laughs> they hopefully. They might be at the door hopefully. right now. Knock, knock. <laughs> buzz, buzz. <laughs> buzz, buzz. <laughs> well, Peter, thank you for your thing. 
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, what a tragic tale. (laughs) Drew Burt at ho underscore Burt on Twitter asks, if you could take the place of one kid's show character, who would it be? Oh. Mm. Now, it's tempting to think the Queen's Nose, Bernard's Watch. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. but then yeah. you think, would I, would my life be normal? No, it wouldn't. And in that in that sense, <laughs> I don't want yeah. that power on a daily basis because I think, due to how humans tend to be, after a while, I think you just start to do increasingly more fucked up stuff. That's true, yeah. actually, isn't it? You get like you, 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 what's normal slowly starts changing, yeah. and you don't even realize you're becoming more and more messed up and doing these horrible things. And then it's the point where you, you're robbing banks and funding militias across the world, yeah. and just all because of Bernard's little watch. Well, you know it. You've murdered a queen wasp, and then it's, you know. Well, yeah, yeah, uh, and you, I kind of wonder whether it would be like having cheat codes enabled in a game where it's like, you get bored. okay, so I can spawn all the weapons in, and I can be invincible in the, in a game, for example, but now it's not really fun anymore. So if like if you could click a watch, like oh yeah, you know you can go in and like get all the money in the world and spend that money on stuff. But eventually you just be like, yeah, I mean yeah, of course I can. Like I've always been able to do that since I've mm-hmm. been in this life, and that's just how that's just my life. That's it. The novelty would wear off, I guess, is what I'm saying. It wouldn't be long um, before you're just praying, praying for the sweet release, you know, because you've done yeah. you've done everything and with no rules. And that's only in the case of Bernard's watch, but with the Queen's nose, who, for those who don't, I mean, on the off chance that listeners haven't aren't yet up to date on their UK children's <laughs> trivia, having been with Podiots for this long, Bernard's watch was a, clo- a pocket watch where he could click it and time would freeze for everyone but him. Uh, the Queen's nose was a 50 pence piece um, where if you rubbed it, you could make a wish. Um, I think there were 10 wishes per Queen's nose. Mm-hmm. Um, however... Queen's Nose is one of those wishing shows or movies or pieces of fiction where the wishes were always corrupted by the object. So you would wish for like, oh, I wish I could be really popular and you would be transformed into Donald Trump, for example. And you'd have like all these Donald Trump fans around you going, yay, Trump. And then you've got to be Donald Trump for the rest of your life. It was that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, you don't want that. You don't want that. You really, you I don't really care don't how many that. millions of people love him. But then um, you, you think about the alternatives and it's like you wouldn't want to be in the tweenies because you'd be a felt monstrosity <laughs> and that would, would be yeah. like your whole deal forever. And there was that time that Max dressed as Jimmy Savile. There was. was Max oh, Jasper, dear. whatever his name was. He's got to dodge Milo and his dangerous ways. His purge. Your if friend your Bella is Bella's going in to the die soon. Sick. <laughs> Bella's yeah, really unwell. There's a talking dog called yeah. Doodles. <laughs> There's only so many times you can wake up in Teletubby land and have that fucking baby laugh. Oh, oh, what's this? Tubby toast again? Exactly. Oh, Every yeah. day is tubby, tubby custard, custard and tubby toast. And those fucking clowns that you live with, they've got these stupid TVs on their tummies and they just go again, again. You're like, fuck off. This is, I don't know how many times you need to watch primary school or nursery school kids count. <laughs> And the guy who lives in the disappearing house down the road is just a creepy puppet man who sings out of the window with a beret on his head. No yeah. one wants that. Who do you, where would you go? I mean, maybe the bungalow. It's a mine that we've frequently oh, yeah. gone to. But at least it's it would be option. kind of normal and you could be an adult in the bungalow with the other adults and joke around and do innuendos yeah. and stuff, you know? I imagine that would get tiring, though. Like, imagine it's just like after several months in the bungalows, I just want to sit down and have a regular meal. But yeah. We've got baby, <laughs> baby races going on. The only thing on the TV is like, watch my you chops. Yvonne of the Yukon. Yeah, Yvonne of the Yukon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You sit down uh, for like two minutes while they're playing a game in another room and the fucking moose head starts making jokes. Yeah, and all the cats here singing about Scunthorpe again. Did he, God. Dick and Dom, like oh, just come out of the cupboards when you just want to make your dinner? Yeah, I want to lie in. It's nine a.m. It's a weekend. Do we have to do this again? Every time you go to the toilet, you get gunged as well. You just hear the, you just hear sort of the muffled intro music in the next to room. the show every morning. 
<laughs> and it just won't end. I like the idea that there's people trying to sleep in the bungalow. <laughs> so like in the main room, there's kids screaming, sticking yeah. toast to each other's faces with Nutella. And there's someone just on the other side of the wall like, fuck me, please, Dick shut Dom up. Do have neighbours <laughs> and they're not happy about it at all. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to think if there is uh, any um, children's TV character... Um, who I had like a crush on, who maybe I could like be their partner. Oh, like, oh, okay. I'm, I'm struggling to think of that many women. I can think of Bob the Builder's partner, Wendy, only because I mentioned Bob the Builder earlier. Right. Um, and I, that's that's the only woman in, that I can think of at the moment. Um, <laughs> that's the only one. There's only one woman. <laughs> Uh, the rest yeah. are, I think, mainly from cartoons and stuff. And I don't know if I want to be a cartoon. I've sort of limited my thoughts to live action mm. for that reason, yeah. you know. I I think, well, I, I was thinking, like, before we got into the Dick and Dom hellscape that living in there would actually be, I was thinking, what about, you know, what was the TV? It was, I think, called The Shoot. It was a BBC show. It was quite late in my childhood, but essentially the story was like someone's been trapped down in the basement of the BBC studios. Oh, with all the and, tapes. Yeah, he literally, like the, the story was that he just spends every day, he's in this room where the floor is nothing but tapes and just, he just oh like, oh, here's God. a good one. Like he just spends his life watching these tapes of blunders and bloopers and I feel like Pilot compared to the, the, the insanity of the bungalow, I want to live in a, in a little underground place where all I get to do is sit and watch tapes. When I used to see that, and again, it was sort of the, at the end of our CBBC tenure, but I do remember a couple of episodes. I thought it just looked like a really lonely existence. Yeah, it he does was just look pretty stuck lonely. down a garbage chute on a mountain of VHS tapes. Like it just seemed so sad and lonely. Get away some banging skinny purple jeans, though. So. Yeah. Fuck it, I'd live in the Pokemon world. Oh, oh, wow, that's a really good that's show. Where I'm, going. <laughs> I'm going to Anime Land. That's where I live. Yeah, why not? Oh, yeah. I, oh, I forgot there was such a thing as anime. That opens up another... I mean, not that I watch any anime, but if I knew any anime, I'm sure I'd be able to <laughs> name a good one here. I have just remembered uh, Ubos, The Ultimate Book of Spells. I don't know if you remember that. That was a slightly that's, obscure. That's oh, there's no the idea. shoot. There he is. Oh, wow, why does he look <laughs> like scream. Wario? Oh, the Chuckle <laughs> Brothers are there. He's not on his own. That's yeah. It's, I think celebrities come by every once in a while. There you so, go. Logistical oh, wow. question for that photo, because the Chuckle Brothers appear to be up to their waist in VHS <laughs> tapes. Do, do you reckon they just poured the VHS tapes over the Chuckle Brothers, or did the Chuckle Brothers just sort of have to shimmy down Before through they the tape? Filming. Yeah. Yeah. How does that work? I don't know. It's a good question. I'm not sure. Wow, it's a nightmare. I mean, that changes things. If you if your friends are down, if you do have some kind of friends down there, that's you know. Yeah. Is he wearing a noose? Oh God. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, it's gotten it's a, a bit loose much. Tie. Um, I feel like Pokemon is like actually the best answer you could have because it's an adventure. There's a bit bit of excitement into it. Yeah. It's not just this locked location. It's an actual world to explore. It's not just <laughs> stuck in a it's mild peril, screaming children. Yeah, and we've already played the game, so we know how it goes. So it's like we already That's know right, what it would be like to all. inhabit that universe in a more involved fashion. It did look like a nice place. It was always quite well. It was it was usually sunny unless they mm. needed it to not be sunny for episodic reasons, yeah. for narrative reasons. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was going to say there was a show called um, The Ultimate Book of Spells, which I think was imported from Canada into, into CBBC. Um, it was an animated show, and it was basically a Harry Potter ripoff. It was about these three kids who went to wizard school, and they had this book that would send them to different layers of the world. Like, they went into... It was a bit like Middle Earth, I guess. It would send them into, like, deeper and deeper layers, um, and they would encounter all sorts of, you know... Uh, whimsical, magical creatures and things, and I thought that was a. Re I loved that show. In fact, I think briefly it might have actually been one of the uh, one of the cartoons they showed on the bungalow. Possibly, mm, okay. I don't think it lasted long on there. That was normally uh, it was like the likes of one of the Yukon, but um, <laughs> yeah, it was a good show. Mm. But it's a similar thing. It's like Pokemon. It's just you know an adventure world. Mm. Interesting. Well, I've committed to the shoot now. I'm stuck That's it. In there. You're going to be in the yeah. shoot. Okay. Fair enough. Enjoy it. <laughs> oh, I will. Try, I'll try send to, send anyway. the best bits. Yes, absolutely. See if you can find some some high res, decent copies oh, of the bungalow. Wait. 
I've just realised being meaning that I'm in the basement of the BBC Studios means I got access to the entire Dick and Don back catalogue, so I get to watch it for the rest of my life. Oh, you'll be the envy of everyone. You do have to find oh. the VHS tapes in that big. <laughs> well, you've got sea a lot of time tapes. on your hands. And yeah. also, the BBC has moved since then, so you know there might They've not be any tapes left. Now. You'll just be in <laughs> just be in a basement with oh, nothing no. else in it. I'll I'll spend the rest of my days hunting for those those. Tapes labeled D and D. Please, D and D tapes. Please, bit of a gamble. It could be anything, really. D and D, but <laughs> yeah, one day we'll get there. Mikey, yes. Do you have a thing? Oh, I've got a thing. I've got a few little things actually. Oh, well, it's a few little things with one overarching themey theme, themey okay. theme thing thing. Okay. We've been in a fun political climate for the last god knows how long, so I thought I'd shine some light on. The fun protests of history, not protests, riots. Oh, okay. You corrected yourself immediately. <laughs> yeah, because these, these aren't protests. These, were, these are just people fighting in the streets. <laughs> but okay. sometimes for good reason, sometimes not. Sometimes it's utterly amazing. So I've, I, I had a little whirlwind tour around history, and I found the most ridiculous reasons for riots to begin. Mm. Um, so I brought three of my favorites along today. Okay. Mm. So we're going way back in time for the first one, which is the Jerusalem Mooning Riot. Okay. I think you might be able to see where this one's going. In his famous work, The Jewish War, the ancient chronicler Josephus recounts a particularly unusual disturbance that occurred between Jews and occupying Roman soldiers in the first century AD. The incident began during Passover when scores of Jews gathered for a celebration at a temple in Jerusalem, Roman troops stood guard over the ceremonies from atop battlements, and according to Josephus, one of the soldiers, raising his robe, stooped in an indecent attitude so as to turn his backside to the Jews and no. made a noise in keeping with his posture. Oh, no. <laughs> that's that's probably the most poetic way I've ever seen anyone say, you've showed his arse, made a fart noise. Made a fart noise, yeah. <laughs> I love I love the way old old books talk about farts. It's so dignified and beautiful. <laughs> they refuse to say the word fart. <laughs> I'd like to see Benjamin Franklin's take on this story. To be honest, I, I should I should go into the the Franklin archives and see what other stuff I can dig out because I'm sure he's he's got more farty farty literature out there. Mm. This ancient instance of mooning sent the crowd into an outrage, and many began yelling insults and lobbing stones at the Roman soldiers. A terrified Roman commander. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just picturing. He's like, oh, Steve, you've done it again. Now I've got to oh, deal with this mess. Steve. <laughs> Keep your ass in your pants. A, a terrified Roman commander called in reinforcements to quell the riot, and the troops attacked the Jewish worshippers in force and tried to drive them from the temple. According to Josephus, the ensuing rush to escape the building was so great that they trod upon each other and squeezed one another till 10,000 of them were killed. Oh my god. The moon that killed 10,000 people. 10,000 people were killed. That's Not even 10,000 people were there. 10,000 people were killed. How big is this temple? How Jesus. many people were there? How, were there no survivors? <laughs> Surely, at the, at the side, side, size of this crowd, if you're at the back of the crowd, you barely even saw that arse. Yeah. So you've got, you've got no idea what's going on. You're just joining in for the fun. Chinese whispers. It's probably it's sort of passed along the line. It was oh, you're probably not allowed to say that anymore, actually. I think they, they've changed the name of that game in school to something else. Um, but, you know, it will start as like, oh, he just showed his arse. Oh, what? Oh, he, he just showed his arms. Oh, what? Oh, what, biker what mice you... from Mars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I am not playing that again. <laughs> Riot in shoes. I, I like I like that as a historical one. That's that's a nice, that's a good start. But this one's a more modern day one. Well, I say modern day. It's more modern day in comparison. This is the Straw Hat Riot. In 1922, fashion rules were taken a little bit more seriously than they are today. Somewhere along the line, it had become fashion faux pas to wear straw hats after September 15th. <laughs> For some reason, that was the cutoff. I think it's like one of those, it's like a weird thing where it's like, oh, we don't like, in America and Labor Day, like, oh, you don't wear white after a certain date. It kind of shows like the end of summer and you kind of look down upon if you wear white after those days. Right. I mean, back in the olden days, that's not quite true today. But yeah, it's just one of those things where like, come on, come on, mate, it's September 16th. We're not wearing hats anymore. It's not mm. summer. And young young delinquents would enforce this unwritten code by knocking the straw hats from the heads of men who wore them past the stated date and would proceed to stomp the hats flat in the road afterward. Whoa. So there's just armies of people going around. It's like, you're wearing your hat, dickhead. Knock it off and stomp it to the ground. God. 
So this rowdy weird. act was so prevalent that newspapers began to print warning stories each year as September 15th approached. <laughs> but undeterred by these stories, the hat smashers still enforced the ban. This time, a few days before the stated deadline, so they're getting in early. Just to surprise you, I guess. <laughs> What's that? Oh, September, September 13th now, buy hat. And on September 13th, 1922, the troublemakers began knocking off and stomping the straw hats of factory workers in the Mulberry Bend area of Manhattan before moving on to torment the local dock workers. Big mistake, don't fuck with dock workers' hats. Oh, yeah, steady on. <laughs> Unlike the factory workers, however, the dock workers were quick to fight back. A brawl between the young pranksters. It's not really a prankster, is it? It's just destruction of property. It's rude. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting off lightly with being pranksters. It's just a prank, bro. <laughs> oh. <laughs> someone there carrying around like a massive film camera like <laughs> it's for a video <laughs> <laughs> a brawl between the young pranksters and the dock workers soon erupted uh, spilling out onto the Manhattan Bridge where it eventually stopped traffic though police arrived to um, break things up this was not the end of the debacle the next night the hat smashers arrived in even greater numbers now armed with large sticks some even had a nail hammered through the top. Oh, God. Right. This is just assault at this point. This isn't a funny prank. They roamed the streets of New York looking for men wearing straw hats, beating anyone who resisted or fought back. Even though several off-duty police officers were among the victims, active police were slow to react, and by the time things were brought to an end, several men were hospitalized with injuries they sustained during the beatings. I... Th- I think at this point a riot's justified. I'm going to oh. rise up against your hat, fascist overlords. I'll wear my straw hat if I want to. I and mean, this last one is this is the main reason why I brought these along. I found this one. I was like, well, I've got to find some more things to supplement this. But this is the Toronto Clown and Firefighter Riot. Excellent. It's a hell of a hell of a title. Yeah. In July 1855, a travelling show called S.B. Hoes start. S.B. Howes, S.B. Howes, let's go with that. S.B. Howes, Star Troop, Menagerie and Circus stopped in Toronto, Ontario for shows over a couple of days. On the night of July 12th, several clowns went to a tavern that was rumoured to be a brothel. <laughs> clowns going to a brothel, why not? <laughs> Were they in full makeup? I hope so, I'm picturing it. And they've got little honky horns on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> the, ta- the, the tavern was also a hangout for a volunteer firefighter brigade the Hook and Ladder Firefighting Company. Both groups were full of rough and tumble men. (laughs) Mr. Tumble's here, I guess. (laughs) The clowns with the show were the men who set up and took down the circus tents. These were beef clowns. These were big boys. And while the firefighters had a reputation for brawling, I misread that. Just And while... (laughs) The firefighters also had a reputation for brawling. There we go. (laughs) At some point in the night, there was a disagreement between the two groups. The clowns and the firefighters weren't getting along. One version of the story says that a clown cut in line. How dare he? Another story says that a hat was accidentally knocked off of the head of the boss clown. No, not the boss clown. The boss clown. (laughs) Boss clown. (laughs) So imagine just this this towering seven-foot clown. How did you even reach up here to get my cat off? This is the boss clown. You're wearing your straw hat after September 15th. (laughs) Got him. Got him. Regardless of how it started, a brawl broke out and two firefighters were badly injured. The fire brigade retreated and the clowns were victorious on that day. At that time in Toronto, a fraternal organization called the Orange Order was made up of Protestants. The organization ensured that orange men received jobs, so a lot of firefighters and police officers were orange men. Word of the fight spread through the ranks of the Orange Order, and the next day, several showed up to confront the clowns. When members of the Hook and Ladder showed up, mayhem broke out. All the tents, including the Big Top, were pulled down and set on fire. Wagons (laughs) were overturned and destroyed. The clowns were mercilessly beaten. Oh, God. Oh, my (laughs) God. (laughs) 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 What scenes? The chief of police, who was also an orange man, took his time sending out officers to help and when they did arrive on scene the officers didn't do much to help the circus they simply watched the destruction and the beatings the riot only stopped when the mayor showed up he personally pulled out an axe out of the hands of a firefighter who planned on killing a clown with it oh my god like what the hell the militia had to be called in and the circus folk were allowed to grab their belongings that weren't destroyed And then they all got into one big car, (laughs) 12 people, squeezed in, and off it went. 
<laughs> and th- I just that picture of the mayor grabbing an axe from a firefighter who's trying to kill a clown. That, <laughs> that's yes. an actual thing from history. It's amazing. Where was that's the incredible. boss clown in all this? That's what I want to know. <laughs> what was the boss clown up to? Mm. <laughs> he was practicing his little mo- his little cycling. So he's he was off in the field cycling yeah. around while there's mayhem to play. <laughs> I'm going to Google, what's a boss clown? Yeah, what is a boss clown? Oh, that, oh it's just scary looking cl- that, no, These, If you search boss clown, you just get nothing but scary pictures of clown. Oh, good. Clowns. Oh, wait, no. We've, the man, hey, do you remember when he brought along the man who wore a clown? He brought a clown along to his, um, into a meeting. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's showing up there. That's he knew the boss he was clown. about to get fired or made redundant yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he showed up. Well, anyway, that's 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 my little trip through history of riots. Incredible! Wow. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> was quite something. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Are you guys ready to take a complete right turn <gasps> into Sad Town? Oh no! Oh, yes, please. Yeah, from clowns to this question. <laughs> it doesn't have to be sad. It can be pretty positive, depending on how we want to tackle this. I think we should tackle it in a positive way and have a have a nice conversation about it potentially. But we'll see where we'll see where it takes us. It's from right. uh, XX Aston X Villa XX at Charlie Funnel Nine, who asks, "What do you guys believe happens after you die?" Oh wow, oh, what a that's question. a fun one. Yeah. Um. Oh, so, as I've heard like people talk about it being like you get to replay your life. Mm. And I, I feel like if that was it, I'd be so upset. Yeah, I don't want to see my life again. Come on, don't show me the best bits. I spent my entire life down the chute watching old things. I don't want to do that all <laughs> over again in the afterlife. I was the very best. <laughs> oh, I don't think you go to heaven as such. I, I don't believe in like a place where all the all your souls go and hang out. Um, but I do wonder. I I just heard this interesting theory once that's almost kind of from a scientific angle that says, um, you know, like you can have dreams where you know, like you wake up in the morning and it's maybe like seven o'clock or something and you sort of nod off again and go back to sleep and then you'll have this really long elaborate dream that seems to last like an hour or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then you wake up and it's only like ten past seven and, you know, the, the whole experience of time can be completely warped by when you're effectively hallucinating or dreaming. Um, And I just saw this theory that's like, um, because, like, if when you're dying, if there's like a little, if if your brain activity is like fizzling out, um, if you can imagine that maybe it, it might theoretically generate a bit of a delusional scene like a dream or something so you have maybe a little dream as you're dying but then because there's no conscious end to that dream because you don't have that moment where you wake up and go oh that was a dream and it's over it's almost like you can because you have no experience of what time is it's effectively infinite only because you don't have a perception of the end of it so Um, it's only, uh, there's no, there's no reason to believe it, but you know, it, it's an interesting idea to think that like you could then in your dying minutes experience an entire life or very, very long, strange dream that seems to go on for hours and hours or days or, or goodness knows how long. Yeah. Um, you know, just, it's just a, an interesting theory that, you know, has some kind of scientific basis that you can relate to. I could be talking out my arse here, but I feel like I remember years ago reading that, like, in, like, your final few minutes, like, basically the the brain is just flushed with activity. Like, it just lights up like nothing else. Yeah, I think I've heard that. So, like, maybe, like, when that flush of activity happens, like, great, we're just throwing everything we got. (laughs) Just Mm. go in the dream world now. Bye-bye. Yeah. (laughs) If you lose all concept of time, then it could feel like it doesn't end. Mm, Maybe. Interesting. I mean, the, the... the the bit of me that wants to not be stuck in eternal, eternal darkness wants to think there's something. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to think there is. Um... <laughs> but in a in a, a, a crushingly down to earth <laughs> capacity, this is nothing going on <laughs> at that point. There's literally nothing to spawn from. <laughs> but I'd lo- I'd love to be reincarnated as something. I'd love to be an animal. Yeah, reincarnation yeah. would be fun, wouldn't it? It would. I mean, depending it on could what be you fun. get it could also, yeah. yeah, you could yeah, be Billy could Bear be. Ham. <laughs> yeah, you could just be free kind of as a pig that gets turned into some Billy Bear ham. Oh, the indignity of it all. Uh, if I die next in like the next week by chance, 
may take that as a sign to buy Billy Bear ham because <laughs> there's a chance that I could be made into, I, you could buy the meat face ham and the time it takes to produce it, I could be raised into into that very meat and you could have me for We could request your, your face on it if you like, Mike, and then you'll <laughs> yeah, get your face we back. Could. <laughs> buy stocks in Billy, in fact, buy stocks in Billy Bear ham. Let me see if I can actually do that right now. Let's actually, just... can we, we could request um, a different slice with a slightly different uh, mouth position and eye position and face position so we can make a Billy Bear Mikey Ham flip book and reanimate <laughs> Michael's face so that he can speak again. I don't oh. I don't want to I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Hamimated. No. Ham- no stop very, stop very it. <laughs> okay, unfortunately I can't buy stocks in uh, Feldhoy's group. Just chuck that on the end of the email. P.S. Trying to buy some yeah, stocks because I thought it would add extra weight to my request for a personalised <laughs> Billy Bearham. I was like, I own one stock. Yeah, as a shareholder. As a shareholder, <laughs> I w- I request one one meat face ham, please. One. I'm not a very active dreamer, in that mm. I very rarely have dreams that I remember. I definitely dream mm. because I've been informed that I have woken up shouting about all sorts of weird stuff in the past mm. i have shouted about bees <laughs> um, oh, all right nick edge no it has happened like no the bees the yeah. bees and and that's it and i have no recollection of what the dream was i very rarely dream usually i go to sleep and then i wake up and that's it mm. so as comforting as some kind of afterlife would be i i imagine i just it's going to be like that where i just i just go to sleep and have no absolutely no concept of being asleep and that's it yeah it's just just like turning off a light switch it's pretty grim but i suppose that's that's reality isn't it have you guys had general anesthetic before for any yes oh god it's weird isn't it yeah that's really strange because at least with normal sleep as a general rule you'll sort of drift off very gradually you know over five ten minutes or whatever as you're lying in bed I mean, you may even wake up quite gradually as well. Maybe not if an alarm goes off. But with general anaesthetic, I found that super weird because not only do they have you out like a light, but they almost want you to try and see if you can stay awake because they're trying to see that you can't and that you have fallen asleep sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't know about you, Ben, but they asked me to count down from 20. And I was like, 20, 19, 18... And then I sort of got to 17 and I didn't really know what number to say. So I went, uh, sorry, sorry. And I was like apologizing because I couldn't do it. How embarrassing. And I was like, no, sorry, 20, 90. And then I was just waking up and I didn't. Oh, that's spooky. It was just so, it's really difficult to describe until you've had it. Like you're there doing something and then I didn't have any uh, awareness of a dream that I had. I guess people maybe can dream during an aesthetic. I don't know what the rules are, but um, I didn't have a dream in that gap to fill it mm. in in my mind. So I was just counting down, and then I was awake in bed like hours later, and that kind of gave me a, a vague understanding of what it might be like to be dead because that there was just <laughs> nothing in that time. There wasn't yeah. like you know blackness and silence. There was just nothing at all. It was it was nothing. It's like the Windows XP shutting down meme. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like that. I you I, I I could feel it when they when they sort of did whatever it is they do to make it go through the IV. It mm. felt almost like a warm adrenaline rush sensation and then it yeah, was just, I think dun, I could dun, feel dun, it. Dun, dun, poof, yeah. And then just <laughs> out, just gone. It was very strange, but uh yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's the honest answer, isn't it? Yeah, that's definitely the honest answer. People have been <laughs> clinically dead before and then come back, and lo- lots of people have all sorts of profound. Mm. Uh, yeah, profound like it's a genuine thing that people do, like genuinely see the light, and it feels like they're going towards something. It's it's really weird. It, it's it's not it, maybe that's you know people being conditioned into that because that's uh, like that's what you hear. So on your last moments, like all right, let's just put on that tape, and, <laughs> and it could be what you guys said. It could just be about the brain just suddenly. Having a, a dream just, that we just all Just doing have, everything, maybe. yeah, all at once and, and it being overwhelming. But I believe that, like, near-death experiences, they're called like that, or, um, yeah, where people see the light and they have quite uh, shared experiences. I think it's not actually completely been explained by science. Like, obviously, there are theories where it's like, oh, people are just 
predisposed. They've heard about other people's near-death experiences. And as they are dying, maybe their brain generates it. Or maybe, you know, it's something that happens when if there's like low brain activity as you're clinically dead, then an inactive brain just fills your eyes with light or, you know, whatever. There's like various theories but I don't think that there's like anything where they're like, okay, we know what's happening here. Like, so even just that question mark does make you think, hmm, kind of strange that like, even in, I think, different cultures who wouldn't necessarily be aware of what you might say is the Western idea or the Christian idea of a near-death experience. Like, it seems to be, I think, quite a common thing, no matter where you are in the world, um, and no matter what your religion is. Yeah. So, I mean, that alone is just an interesting aspect to it, I guess. Much to think about. Mm. Thanks for the, the sense of existential dread that's now making my tummy go all butterfly. Oh, no. <laughs> Thanks. What's a way that we can come back from this? Oh, I'd love to hear your thing, Ben. Yeah? That would, that would cheer me right up. Okay. Well, let's talk about it. So I've just heard that Mikey's going to die soon <laughs> from his doctor. My thing is grave plots. What can they do for you? <laughs> Uh, no, my thing is is about UFOs. Oh, yeah. Okay. And hopefully it can it can spur some sort of discussion, perhaps similar to that one, because there's not as I thought this would be really exciting, and there's not as much to go on as I had hoped. Uh, but you'll see why I had those thoughts to begin with in a second. So this is an article from Vice. You can now easily download all CIA UFO documents to date. Ah, yeah. Ooh. The Black Vault has released hundreds of public PDFs containing CIA information on UFOs. So immediately I thought, this is just like Bin Laden's hard drive. There's going to be some sort of UFO horsedance.mkb yeah. <laughs> that we can download and watch the aliens ride a Dancing. horse and dance with it. Yeah, it's not like that at all. It's it's a lot of PDFs that have been redundant quite heavily. Yeah. And you can't really read much of it. But anyway, here we go. In anticipation of the government's official UFO report coming in less than six months thanks to the COVID-19 omnibus bill, you can now download all of the publicly available CIA documentation on UFOs. The Black Vault, a clearinghouse for declassified documents, has released a downloadable document archive filled with PDFs containing CIA files on unidentif uh, unidentified aerial phenomena, or UAP, the government's prefer preferred term. Some of the reports date all the way back to the 1980s, and according to the site's founder, John Greenwald Jr., the spy agency claims this is all of its documents on UAPs. According to Greenwald, around 10,000 Freedom of Information Act reports were required to obtain the PDFs, and the process was an excruciatingly long one. He scanned the documents by hand. Oof. Oh, that's right. I yeah, like to make it difficult, they made like you've got to work for this. If you want this secret information, you've got to, you've got to print, get all these prints out and put it together in a good format for everyone else to read. They made them work for it. Yeah, bastards. they really did. So you can go to you can Google this Vice article and find it. It's got links in it. Um, but there's yes, this this website is there's also uh, NSA.gov forward slash news features forward slash declassified documents forward slash UFO, and that's got some stuff in it mm -hmm. that you can click through, including. Um, his, they've, they've written here about an article in a Russian magazine in 1968 about, uh, from, from a science editor about, a, a sort of debunking flying saucers completely, apparently. <gasps> and it's all in there, all scanned. You can read the whole document. None of it is redundant, but it looks like they were just collating all information. Anything that falls under the UFO tag, essentially, mm. is all filed under the same thing. Even if it's not like, found an alien today, lol. So there's lots it's of It's like they just they set up a Google alert for the word UFO and just, <laughs> and just everything kept it all. Yeah, there's a whole thing in here. There's a report from 1994 summarizing the Roswell incident or the purported Roswell incident when supposedly there was uh, a crashed UFO and alien so remains. Yeah, they said it was a weather, weather balloon and stuff. It's, it's like pages and pages and pages long. There's mm. loads of stuff in there. Uh, a report that came in from Argentina about uh, an unidentified celestial body that flew over in 1965, apparently. So lots of interesting stuff there. And I've just closed that tab, and now I'm looking at Billy Bear meat again. So let's <laughs> get rid of that real quick. Uh, but one of the apparently most interesting pieces to come from this, according to the, the Black Vault themselves, the people who scanned all these PDFs and requested them in the first place, um, is that 
There, in this CIA UFO document, the Assistant Deputy Director for Science and Technology was shown something related to a UFO that was hand-carried to him. He decided he would personally look into it, and after, he gave advice on moving forward. That advice is classified. So here is the mm. image. There's a lot of redundant going on, which makes it difficult, but it does clearly state that this important person was brought information about ufos they said they would look into it personally they offered advice that was redundant mm. oh. so it's pretty intriguing that was that from 16th of april 1976 yeah. after a short ex examination of its contents advised us he would personally look into the matter and get back to us mm. <laughs> interesting very strange i mean even this doesn't prove anything, but no. it's, it's at least slightly interesting that um, that they were even doing that sort of quote unquote Google alert for any article <laughs> about UFOs. Like you know, it's it's kind of strange that they would just they would be interested in archiving a Russian magazine article about UFOs. Like why why should they care about someone who's just saying UFOs aren't real? And yeah. here's my magazine article about it. Like yeah. that, like, as I say, it doesn't prove anything at all. It's not ev any kind of evidence, but it's just like, mm, okay, they, it's they're very interested in the topic. Yeah, absolutely. So all these files are available to look at now if if people are interested. And it sounds like we're going to get a load more information in about six months time mm. uh, when they have to publish Ooh. this stuff because of that omnibus bill that went through. But I suppose the the wider discussion I wanted to have with you guys was thoughts on UFOs. And uh, are they are they real? Have aliens been here? What do you think? Ooh, that's a fun question. Have they been here? I mean, they've got to exist. I I feel no shame in saying that. There's got to be other other life out there. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Just statistically, it's just it just seems so unlikely that we're just the we're the stupid little meat bags who happen to we're the survive. only ones. I mean, that's the yeah. that's the fun thing actually. Think about what because. When you think of UFOs and aliens, you kind of tend to think, oh, they're going to be like us. They're going to have limbs and things, but they could be anything. It could be like gaseous life forms that just float around. I like yeah. this name. It could Fart. be silicon based <laughs> instead of carbon. You know, mm -hmm. really weird. Fuck. All sorts of options. Have you ever seen a UFO? Um, uh, my answer's been redundant by the CIA. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember seeing something when I was younger that at the time really confused me, but I. It, it was just, it was probably just like a helicopter or something. Well, the thing is, I would see it regularly. So it was around winter time, and when we drove um, back from school at night, it would be dark on, on the school bus I'm talking about here. And um, it was through this a very rural area. It was just flat land and fields and fields and fields and the occasional farm. And way off on the horizon, at the same sort of time every day as we passed this area, in the distance, this really, really, really bright light would go like slowly up into the sky and then it would start to descend again and then it would fade out. And I didn't know what it was. And we used to like more than one of us like had seen it and we're like, what is that? Why is that like vanishing? And uh, so obviously at the time when I was a kid, I thought, oh, it could be a UFO. But I mean, it's just it's a UFO in the sense that it's an unidentified flying object as far as I'm concerned. But if yeah. someone who might know better and know the area would just say, oh, yeah, that's they do like a an aircraft that like they, they, they test helicopters over there or you know like something there'll, there'll be an explanation for it but yeah that's the closest i've come is seeing a thing that at the time i thought was you know potentially supernatural but i don't mm. think really was yeah um, i i largely fall into the same camp in that i think i think there's there's alien life there's life on other planets out there somewhere I yeah. don't think it's nearby and if it is it's going to be microscopic microbes organisms that mm. kind of stuff um <clears throat> however i i believe i believe ufos are real in the strictest possible definition of what a ufo is being an unidentified yeah. flying object like, yeah. i believe people have seen things that they can't um they can't explain but i do believe that those things are are rationally explainable you know they have a reason for 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 being i don't think they're aliens i think if if people i believe that people have seen lights in the sky and and seen things like oh my god that's a ufo because it's unidentified and it's flying and it's an object. But yeah. I don't believe it's a 
it's an alien <laughs> flying around. Uh, it's probably, it's probably, as you say, a helicopter or something or a satellite passing by, that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I think they're real, but not aliens. Have you been um, keeping up with Tom DeLong of Blink-182 fame? No, I haven't. I'm aware he's a big ufologist. Like, oh, yeah. I think Robbie Williams is as well. He is, yeah, into, Robbie Williams uh, is. Oh, nice. Well, I, uh, in 2015, I think, um, Tom left Blink-182 to pursue ufology oh full-time. Like, it's his thing now. Okay. And I've just kind of Googled to kind of gather what information I could. And this is a headline that reads, Tom DeLonge claims aliens may have been present at the birth of Jesus. Was that a star or a craft? <laughs> oh, for God's Fuck's sake. sake. See, stuff like that where it's like, yeah, there's a big light in the sky. What is it? Is it unidentified? Maybe at the time, yes. But I'd like to think they knew what stars were. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I I'm a big fan of Tom doing this because he's putting money into it. Like in ufology, historically, it's not not something people put money into. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm very curious to see where this goes because I mean, it, it, I think they released a couple of videos a couple of years ago of like it was um, um some army's footage of like a genuinely incredible like a, a proper UFO and that like, you look at it and you're like what the hell is that mm. it's mm. like the way like you can hear them talking it's legit footage as well it's like backed up it's like this just craft hovering at a perfect speed it's like, oh, in there there's like losing their minds over it I'm sure if I read yeah, into it more like it. it's actually just a duck <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's several ducks <laughs> um, but I, let's carry on Mikey sorry oh I just, I just wanted to quickly talk about one of my favorite conspiracy theories okay. regarding okay. aliens like gen- alien conspiracy is just the best things to listen to. Yeah. Um, there's one um, co- about um, a base in a place called Dulce in New Mexico. And the theory is that underground is like an underground network of tunnels and layers and levels where they store alien life. And like at the top levels, it's all kind of like your standard aliens, you know, like your ones that walk around and like they've, they've kind of been able to tame into a certain level or are able to communicate with. And as you go further and further down, these aliens just get more and more messed up and more dangerous and more bizarre. And like genuinely there's like books written about this stuff. It's so amazing. It's such good storytelling. <laughs> like That's what like, I was about to say. Yeah. I was going to say as what, whatever you think of like the idea, you know, whether you're, a little bit crazy and think maybe that like all the presidential families in America are aliens or you know the royal family are reptiles or you know if you're not like that at all and you don't think that there's any life outside of earth I don't think there's any denying that some alien conspiracy theories are cool stories like as as works of fiction as much as anything else like I really like the idea of um there are, there are certain cave paintings, I think particularly in Australia maybe, or it might be South America, um, where um, these paintings have been done of things that look like um, your traditional aliens with big bug eyes. And sometimes there are paintings that like, or hieroglyphs as well. There's like a hieroglyph that looks like a, a helicopter because like Ooh. two, I think the explanation is that two layers of hieroglyphics have been like, carved over each other and when they combine together they look a bit like a helicopter and like i really a transformer <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> and i really love stuff like that like i find it so as i as i say like as a work of fiction or science fiction i think it's a really cool kind of creepy it's a bit like 2001 a space odyssey with the monolith and the the ape men at the beginning i don't know if you've seen that film um mm. but like this monolith turns up in prehistoric times and they're all like sort of worshiping it and uh the, the music is terrifying and I kind of like the idea of ancient aliens visiting people before they even you know understood what like they barely even understood metals and things yeah. and you know what wh- how would you even react to that and what would you think of those people that they would just be like gods to you you know mm. and it's, it's a it's very interesting it's a fun story it is sorry I've just I've just found a worldy of a court regarding Tom's Tom's um, discoveries. <laughs> the Navy went on record stating the phenomena depicted in those videos is, quote-unquote, unidentified. That really made me surprised, intrigued, and excited and motivated to push further for the truth. <laughs> they confirmed that it's unidentified, that they couldn't identify it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that means it's a UFO. Excellent. <laughs> Evidence. That's amazing. Also, the cave drawings and stuff. I mean, as recently as the, as, as the fucking Middle Ages, did you see how 
fucking bad they were at drawing, like painting <laughs> cats and stuff. I mean, yeah. there's no way that anyone would have been able to accurately draw an alien at that time. People couldn't even get cats or horses right, you know, until Cows. the last two or three hundred years. Like this all looked wrong. So there's a very good chance they were just painting, I don't know, fucking crocodile or something. Oh yeah, like the I I think the the conventional explanation is well, I think it, it varies from thing to thing, but yeah. they you know most experts say, oh no, this is this is like the traditional way that they would depict, say you know the shaman of the tribe or <laughs> oh my god that that's a shaman of the tribe. <laughs> there it is. Look at that. It's a long boy. That's one for the thread, certainly. That cat. It's a really long medieval cat there. I'm open to not even that they're being um, conventional, uh, well-understood explanations for everything, even though we just can't always put connect one thing with another. Like I'm even open to the fact that, yes, there are UFOs, and, you know... They they might be something that is unidentified because most people don't even know about it in that it might be like a secret aircraft that's being tested by the military or it might be, you know, something like that. Like, I think you can still enjoy UFOs and, and kind of think, well, you know, there's there's some mystery here that is slightly easier to believe versus interstellar travel. Like, mm-hmm. you know, maybe it's a strange... Um, biological phenomenon or you know s- some kind of chemical reaction that's happening in the atmosphere because of exact conditions that very very like very rarely happen or like ball lightning for example is something that's very much mm. um, accepted by science but we don't really understand it at all mm. and like literally I think there are stories of it like a ball of energy floating in through people's windows and like burning people and then leaving like it it goes in and out and it's understood to be ball lightning but we don't really get how it works but that's not an alien that's just a very strange and rare natural occurrence and you know so you can have ufos and you can even have them being weird and unusual and interesting without them having to be alien travelers yeah absolutely i think in the in the strictest possible definition of ufo they definitely exist but I don't think they're yeah. aliens, and I think they all have rational explanations. But it's still really interesting, and yeah. uh, and pretty pretty fun. All those all those doc documents out there for people to look at. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, much like life after death, it's just fun to have some kind of hope beyond yeah. <laughs> the harsh facts. Yes, <laughs> mm-hmm. absolutely. Oh, dear. Right, time for our final question. Are you boys ready? Yes. Yes, sir. This is from Uddy Monkey at Uddy Monkey on Twitter. You boys are lovely boys. All girls. But what thing really, really, really pisses you off? Oh, um... People taking up space in supermarket aisles, uh, being oh. oblivious to the amount of space they're taking up on pavements where there's a group of three people walking at you side by yeah. side, forcing you onto the onto the road. People in town walking extremely slowly and sort of meandering across in front of you. All of these issues have been exacerbated by COVID, but they have long been yeah. just irrational anger inducers in me. Oh, you know, it's like, you know how toddlers and children walk around as if the world bends to their will. Yes. If they want to go somewhere, they will just go in that direction and assume whatever's in their way will move out the way. Yeah. Like if a toddler comes for you, you've got to move out that way. That thing will not stop. Um, there's adults out there who still do the yes. same thing. It, yes, it's just are. like fuck off. Yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna stop in the middle of this alleyway and turn around sharply, like do it slowly. Look behind you before you do so. Don't just fucking stop right in yeah, front of me. Let me bump into you. Wander like, oh. across. It's the same with uh, when people are holding shopping baskets, or if you're at the airport and they've got uh, their luggage behind them. They treat they treat it as an extension of themselves rather than something they can actively move out of your way to be polite. Mm. So they'll walk at you with a basket at their side so they're like, you know, three feet wide and you have to get out of their way rather than, you know, moving the basket in front of them so that they take up less room and they're just a polite functioning member of society. They're just totally oblivious to the fact that they can they can do something about the space they're taking up. Yeah, I was going to say even before you started, just like ignorant people who don't think about how their actions are going to affect others, like in terms of um, noisy neighbours who's like 
play mm. music, stamp around. People who drive with music like booming and they're sitting at like traffic lights in front of someone's house or something like that. Um, I really, really fucking hate litter so much. Mm-hmm. Like really oh, hate oh. it. I was walking to Sainsbury's yesterday and there's a car parked near a by and just as I walked past, they just threw like several McDonald's oh, boxes God, out. I people can't believe do. people I still don't get do it. that. Yeah. I, I, I already just shout out cunts to them, but <laughs> I was too scared to go over and chuck them back in the car. I just kept on bravery. And like fly them. tippers and stuff. Like you drive past a lay by in the country and people have just dumped like three fridges there because they've been paid to take it away because they're like waste disposal. And then all they do is mm. chuck it there. Mm. Um, you know, I sometimes like I'll 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 get really pissed off about it and I'll like vocalize it to myself. Like me and Amy might be walking along and I'll say, "Fuck! Why do people do this? Why? What the fuck?" And she'll say, that, "You know, they've just not been taught the way you have that like don't drop litter." You know, and not that she's excusing it. She's not saying, "Oh, it's okay, leave them alone." She's just saying, "Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it, that like not everyone has been." told hey maybe this is like a really dick thing to do and you shouldn't do it yeah um yeah like i if i was a dictator of the country and i was able to just tell everyone to do what i want them to do i would make them teach in schools don't fucking drop litter or i would put a massive (laughs) massive (laughs) fine or prison (laughs) sentence on. You're a, you're a dictator, but your action to stop littering is better education. Yeah, <laughs> not, not, not actually like death stop, not like shooting people for doing it. Just like no, tell, go to tell them in the schools not to do it. No, I would. I'd get death squads for mm-hmm. people who there drop McDonald's. You're right. That's fair. You're That's right. the only rational response to it. Yeah, I hate that my building only has one recycling bin outside because mm-hmm. it fills Wait. up immediately immediately as soon as it's emptied it it immediately fills back up and then people just stack it higher and higher until the lid won't close it's practically open so that then when it's wheeled out onto the street by the caretaker it blows all over the road yeah and there's just the With that- why aren't there two recycling bins and then everything else just has to go into landfill because there's no room for more recycling. How hard is it to get two recycling With, bins? without somehow doxing yourself roughly how many people share that been um i like, would uh, guess the about the maybe f- oh goodness maybe 80 people well 80 oh. 80 households 80 flats perhaps in yeah. my little corner of the of of the the, the flat area where i live um Fuck, that is an oversight it's yeah, just nothing so much so that they've got these little regular size wheelie bins next to the big recycling bin but they're like in little metal metal prisons where they've got a little a, a flap at the top where you can post stuff into it, like a bottle bank, but, you know, tiny. And yeah. Yeah. I've taken to just freeing those wheelie bins from their metal prisons, <laughs> o- opening the lid and just pouring all my recycling into those instead, which is not what they're for, and it's not what you're meant to do. But when the big bin's already full, come on. That's nobody's fault but the, but the people who look after the building, obviously. But it's that really annoys me. I'm not gonna not gonna kill anyone though. No. <laughs> well, I will. This is a hyper specific aggravation. It's not even it's not even a bad one. It's just it's a it's an inconvenience every time I go shopping. Is that in, in our local Tesco, right by like there's a security guard who always stands by the door and it just so happens that where he stands is right in front of the bananas. <laughs> and I get bananas every time I go shopping. It's like I'll I'll go in there like, alright, he's in front of the bananas again. I'll go get the other stuff and I'll loop around and hope he's moved from bananas. Oh, no. And every time he hasn't, he's still there. So I start looking around at the things next to the bananas. Examining bananas. <laughs> like, oh, yes, mm, peppers, they're looking good today. And eventually he kind of looks over and he, he moves away. And then I go and pounce on the bananas. Fuck's sake, <laughs> That's what you need your bravery pill for, Mikey. <laughs> to ask him, man. Oh, sorry, man. Could you just move a little bit to the right, please? Thanks. <laughs> Such <laughs> the, the lowest stakes I've ever heard. <laughs> You'd I think want that bananas. he must get told to move on the regular by by braver people than us. Like, why does he still stand there? <laughs> is there know. room for I mean, him to stand somewhere else? Well, that's the thing. It's such a small shop that uh, that is the only place by the door that he can stand. Right. Otherwise, he's he's go, he's he's congesting up lanes. So yeah, he is. I can see so why then Ben he's doing will be it. pissed off. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, don't get me started. And I swear to God, if he drops a banana, a banana wrapper on the floor, yeah, you fucking <laughs> kill him. The plastic bag, the banana comes in. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, 
I think that's the best I can think of. I think that's it, boys. An, an eclectic uh, collection of conversations this week on Podiots. Mm, that's good. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you for supporting us. We very much appreciate it. Did you know that if you go to store.yorkscast.com, there is merchandise available? Oh, you're absolutely right, Ben Potter. We got a beautiful selection of T-shirts, hoodie with an S, maybe. I can't remember. Um, <laughs> we've got mugs, definitely with an S. Yeah, it was just the one hoodie, actually. Um, but we've got some lovely designs there. And if you're feeling tempted, or maybe you're just like, mm, a bit too pricey for me. Guess what? Oh. If you use code VIDIOTS, that's the name of the channel, VIDIOTS at checkout, you'll get 10% off everything. No. Whoa. Everything, not just VIDIOTS stuff, everything on that gosh darn forsaken website. So you can you can come home with some fresh new fresh new clobber. That's, oh, that felt wrong saying that. Some fresh clob. And <laughs> you can do it while making a saving. That's VIDIOTS at checkout. Incredible. We are available on a variety of platforms YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all.com forward slash vidiots. Official. official. Oh, sorry, I zoned. Vidiots official. All.com uh, forward slash vidiots official. Official. Well done. Yeah, nailed it. Yeah. it. We're also on twitch.tv forward slash vidiots official. We stream there from time to time. Uh, we auto host what Mikey's doing over on twitch.tv forward slash parrot boy and what Peter and I are up to over on twitch.tv twitch <laughs> forward slash team triple jump. So even if we're not streaming on vidiots, there's plenty of us around online doing regular streams. Um, I'm We're recording this ahead of time. And I'm assuming it goes ahead, but I want to thank everybody who hopefully came along to the charity stream I did on Vidiots on Saturday, last Saturday. And I'm sure we raised some money for a good cause. So thank can we, you. Can we record a different take yeah. where we say, um, Jesus Christ, Ben, what a shit show. You somehow managed to lose charity money. Just then you know, we can edit in however. however okay, are you ready? Yeah, yeah. I would like to thank people for responding on social media and saying that they would come to the stream but i was kind of disappointed that nobody did and hopefully yeah. we'll we'll get them next time right in fact in fact i don't i don't know if we, if i'll do it again really Th thanks to ben's mum for the 10p donation <laughs> it's, it's gonna go a long way i refunded it ben oh, have you got that 10p that you owe me no yeah. it's oh. all gone wrong oh, see that's yeah. the sad timeline Hopefully, yeah. we live in the nice timeline where we raised a lot of money for Cancer Research UK, and I'm sure we did. So thank you, everyone, sure for coming, did. and I bet we had a lovely time, a lovely, lovely time. If you would like lovely. to uh, support us here and what we do on Podiots, you can go to streamlabs.com forward slash Podiots donations. Donate £3 or more, and you get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show. So once more, here is Pod Squad for this week. Chonky boy. Demo Dick's Twitching Asshole, Keir Dewey, The Very Generous Samuel de Barber, Gooey Bugs Bitoon, Lockdown 3, Stupid Nazis, Who Was Very Generous and Says, Barry Scott Violets Pennies, Dabitha Christie, got it nice. that time, Emily Lemons, Big Titty Justin 69, New Year, sorry, Big Titty Justin 6010, yes, that's it. <laughs> New Year, New Chegwin R.I.P., very generous. Jericho's Mud Baby. Spread Cheeks Slap Balls, <laughs> my age-old saying. Chav Chav Ramirez. Cares of Gallifrey. And the uncancellable Tom Hanks. Also, artist formerly known as Chegg. Lou. Mum said dinner's ready. Carry the worst. Freddy Weber buys used pants. Sad Keith Chadwank. Cold as a witch's tit. Lord Brotovich. Mr. Black. Make TP say cunting daughter. Stephen Scodes. Donna C07, Base Windu, I Come in the Land Down Under, Can't Shack It, Bean, 4PGBP Mikey, and 4TP Wedding, uh, Make America Jugson Again, and I've done an inflection that means that <laughs> it's now Ben's turn. Excellent, thank you. Ha ha, meat tube, ha 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 who was very generous. Thank you again. And if you also want to consider potentially influencing the entire direction of a podcast, I mean, what better way to do it than by yeah. donating enough to leave a message? Who knows? You, you, never know, you, never, you never know what's going to happen. Defuse Trap McFacey Boy, 
Jinky Fizz Gog, Bobby Stream Fund, The Diller in Manila. Man- oh god, I struggled again. The Diller in Manila. Hello, this is Rules Boys. Potato Shack for Dronald Tump. Dronald Tump 2024. Fuck Mini Cheddars. Trade Union Congress Bickies. Joan Skeed Independent Fadge. Reggie Bronx, who was extremely generous. Thank you again. Prince Beefcakes. Cheggers Naked Jinkle. Mr. Macca. And Followed By, who is in fact the final member of pod squad thank you again streamlabs.com forward slash put it's donations if you'd like to join thank you mikey where can people find you at powerboy on everything pretty much i mean there's two websites mainly so everything at powerboy on twitter where you can keep up to date with the happenings in my life but at the minute it's mainly just me saying i'm going to be streaming on at, at powerboy on twitch where I'm, I'm streaming semi-regularly come come join in it's good fun it is and peter where can people find us I am at that Peter Austin on Twitter and Instagram. Ben is at confused underscore dude on just Twitter. But together we are Jedward and we are at <laughs> Team Triple Jump over at Team Triple Jump where um, we're available on Twitter and Facebook, but more importantly, YouTube and Twitch, all Team Triple Jump, uh, where we put out lots of content. It's all gaming related and Rules Boss is still over there hanging out with us. He, he moved over from, from Vidiots and he's having a great old time. Um, not very often at the moment, though. But he's he's the probably the only character we. Oh, and Billy, Billy's there. Billy's, Billy's there. Fine. Hey, yeah. Billy's there. Is Jedward yeah. still alive? I guess so. They weren't that old. No, but they got old, didn't they? Everyone gets old. Yeah. Are there, is the hair still? Oh, the hair's slightly less fantastic now. It's got to uh, be exhausting being them. Yeah, it must be. Yeah, they are beautiful. It's got to take years of your life. Anyway, thank you everyone for listening. (laughs) Leave us an iTunes review or a review slash rating on your platform of choice. It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms. Do we have a final question for people? Oh Jesus Christ! What the fuck is that, Michael? (laughs) Jedward. Oh, you know everyone's favorite duo. Everyone's fucking in sort of clingy leotards. Not nice. Oh, um. Uh, sorry, I disrupted the question. Yeah, with, with a final horrible image. <sighs> yeah. Um, um, maybe just tell us why Mikey posted that. Why did he do it? Why is he? Yeah, why is he why? done? I'm posting it now on Twitter. Why has he done that? There you go. Mm-hmm. Why did he do what that? Did he do that for? Why has he done that for? Yeah. Why? How has he done that? Why? Mm-hmm. Go on, why? let us know. All right, we'll see you next time, everybody. Look after yourselves, and uh, it'll be episode seventy-one next time, in keeping with the new numbering system that we have unanimously adopted and makes perfect sense. Yep. Yep. All right. Great. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye.